Monsanto is currently the largest producer of genetically engineered seeds in the world. Plants like potatoes, corn, and soybeans have been engineered to resist certain diseases and produce a better crop for sustainability. The glyphosate herbicide seed allows farmers to increase their yield by planting rows closer together, so less farmland is needed to produce a larger crop. By the year 2050, Monsanto hopes to help farmers increase food supply to feed 10 billion people. Two officials from Monsanto were guests by way of the Internet at a Dixie State University forum to help those in attendance understand the GMO process. Do you feel confident that the Monsantos of the world will be able to come up with solutions that the food supply will be able to match demand? Yes. Human health is really dependent on animal and plant health as well. And the way those triangulate are becoming critically important. And so it's going to take a transdisciplinary group to try to face the biggest challenges that we have. And the other key thing is that Monsanto or another individual company is going to be able to do it by themselves. This is going to take a concerted effort across society uh, to be able to deliver it. Genetically modified foods are plants or animals that have genes copied from other plants or animals inserted into their DNA. Based in St. Louis, Missouri, Monsanto stands upon its crop protection protocols and agriculture developments based on scientific evidence. This process doesn't come without criticism. The technology has been rejected by some foreign markets in the past. There's third world countries that are getting rid of our food, that do not want our food. They're starving. They'd rather starve than eat Monsanto and GMOs. By using such techniques like plant breeding, Monsanto has developed hardier breeds of fruit and vegetables. But some question whether manipulating the DNA can be harmful to humans. Producing like a toxic outcome. If the DNA is manipulated down the line, is there any probability that it'll produce something that could be potentially harmful? The quick answer to that is potentially yes. Uh, one of the classic articles in the literature was from uh, Dr. Bruce Ames that says that 99.9 percent of the pesticides in your diet are natural. Watson said besides producing natural toxins, the GMO plants could also cause potential allergens to some consumers. However, he stated that every plant variety has to go through an approval process. The FDA has deemed the process as safe. Watson said the food has shown no negative interaction with consumption. No, I'm not very concerned. I think, yes, uh, occasionally there's a glitch in the system, but uh, overall I think uh, we have checks and balances and uh, safety is a prime consideration and uh, I trust our, our system. In July of 2016, Congress passed legislation requiring most food packages to carry a text label, a symbol, or an electronic code readable by smartphone that indicates whether the food contains genetically modified ingredients or GMOs. Fruit that is GMO modified will have an 8 in front of the PLU number. Organic will be labeled with a 9, and a conventional grown product will start with a 3 or a 4, like this banana. Watson said Monsanto is responsible for saving the endangered papaya plants that were once dying out due to a virus in Florida and Hawaii. Oranges are now being studied through plant breeding techniques to combat drought and pests. But not everyone believes the genetically modified crops are proving to be good for future growth, especially when it comes to the bees that pollinate these plants. Study after study has shown that any bees that come in contact with GMOs, um, pesticides, Things that are connected to Monsanto, directly or indirectly, have proven, at least from what I read, to diminish the bee population. But Monsanto claims they are working to protect honeybees from a mite that is attacking them. Dunn, who was a medical toxicologist, said agriculture is critical when it comes to future existence, but it is rarely discussed. Her interest is to make sure there is enough food to feed the impoverished around the world, no matter where they live. The proof will be in what lies ahead. From Dixie State University, Melissa Anderson, CEC News.